Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Color Nation Media, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 115, and in this episode we're going to be finishing up the purification. The remainder of the shadow Pokemon that we haven't gotten to yet. It's going to be 10 in total that we're going to be getting to, and uh, 9 of them are in the purifying chamber right now as we speak. So we're going to do those first, obviously, and then finish off. Uh, with the last legendary that we have to do. In set number one here, we have the normal and flying type evolution of Talo from the Hoenn region. And it's going to be Swellow. It has the Guts ability, so it increases its attack uh, when it has any type of uh, status condition. And it's going to come with the moves Baton Pass, Agility, Facade, and Sky Attack. Uh, facade is great for amping up that Guts ability. And that Agility and Baton Pass can uh, really do... A number on teams and really uh, just kind of form your own sweepers uh, out of Pokemon that are normally pretty slow like Ursaring, Machamp and uh, Pokemon like that. Anywho, uh, we're moving on here to set number two. We have Doug Trio, the pure ground type evolution of Diglett from the Kanto region. Would not recommend using these Doug Trios because these Doug Trios, there's only one Doug Trio, they're just multiple Diglets. Anyway, uh, the trio is so, so fragile, even though it's fast, uh, almost anything can kill it in one hit. It does have the Sand Veil ability, so in Sandstorms it evades attacks pretty easily, and it also comes with Earthquake, which is nice, but uh, it's just way, way too fragile to, to be used on a competitive team. Alright, in set 3, we have the Water and Fighting type, Polyrath. And... As far as water types go, uh, Polyrath is just outclassed by a lot of the other water type Pokemon in this game, namely uh, Sveal and even Dugong. Um, so I just would not recommend uh, using Polyrath. I mean, there's also Starmie and Lapras, and just Polyrath can't stand up to uh, the rest of those water type Pokemon. It is an interesting typing, though, with water and fighting, and I believe it can also uh, come with Hypnosis, so that part is interesting and intriguing but uh, it's not a Pokemon you're going to want to use on your team most likely all right in the next set we have Electabuzz it's a pure electric type Pokemon has a static ability as you know as I have one on my team uh, this one's going to come with cross chop much like the Elekid that we raised uh, had and it's also going to come with follow me which is a move that Electabuzz doesn't normally have but I feel like that's a really bad move for Electabuzz to have because uh, of, namely, just how fragile Electabuzz can be. Normally, Electabuzz can only absorb uh, like one or two hits um, when we're talking about Pokemon that are on its level as far as attacking power and levels go. So having it use Follow Me will almost assure that it gets killed that turn. So unless you just want to waste your Electabuzz and have it be a fodder Pokemon, Follow Me doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, you'd much rather have Follow Me on a Togetic or a Clefable. All right, in the next set, we have Scyther, the bug and flying type Pokemon, who unfortunately cannot be involved in this game because you have to trade it. So you would have had to have beaten the game already and then trade it to uh, a Game Boy game and then trade it back. It does come with Morning Sun, uh, which is good for getting some health back, and that's a move that Scyther can't normally learn. So that part is cool. Uh, but I think uh, the fact that you can't evolve it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it because Scyther can definitely... Uh, hold its own without being evolved and it's one of the few Pokemon that can do that uh, because it has such high attacking power and speed and it can also use Swords Dance to amp, amp up its uh, attacking power it doesn't need to evolve into Scizor to be useful Snorlax is the next Pokemon it's going to come with Fisher, which is a one hit KO move I suggest that you get rid of that actually I also suggest you get rid of Refresh because those are moves that Snorlax just should not be using I would stick to using Body Slam, Hyper Beam Earthquake, Shadow Ball, moves like that. Other than that, Snorlax is just an HP and special defense monster uh, and does have its uses despite being a somewhat annoying normal type Pokemon. All right, next we have Chansey, who requires a certain level of happiness in order to evolve. So um, if you didn't capture it in a luxury ball, I would give it a Soothe Bell while you're training it uh, to make it uh, grow fonder of you faster. Anyway, uh, Chansey doesn't have a lot of uses, honestly, uh, other than being a wall, a special wall, that is, because its physical defense is just atrocious, and I'm talking, like, probably, like, in the 20s or 30s, even at level 50. Just really sad. 
Chansey also does have a ridiculous amount of HP, and Blissey has to be in the top five for a uh, Pokemon with high HP in the game. All right, next we have the Dragonite that we captured from Meyer B in Gadian Port. It's a Dragon and Flying type Pokemon, so it does have the quad weakness to Ice, of course. This Dragonite is going to come equipped with Hyper Beam already and Heal Bell, which is a move that Dragonite can't normally learn, although I suggest you get rid of that uh, for some more attacking moves. Dragon Dance is an amazing move for Dragonite to have, as is Earthquake, so it means that you don't have to waste uh, your Earthquake TM on it because uh, chances are you're not going to want to use Earthquake on Dragonite anyway. And Dragon Dance increases attack and speed at the same time, so that means that moves like Pepper Beam and Earthquake are just going to be a ridiculous uh, amount of uh, power attached to it, so it's just. Uh, mind-boggling if you allow Dragonites to get set up with uh, those Dragon Dances. Alright, moving on. The last Pokemon that we're doing here is Lickitung, the normal type Pokemon. Keep in mind, it does not have the evolution Licky Licky uh, in the third generation. I do not recommend using it. Uh, most of its stats are pretty mediocre. Um, but one of the useful things that it does have is the own tempo, eh, own tempo ability, which will uh, prevent it from being confused, so you can... Uh, Use it if you want to use Teeter Dance to confuse everyone on the field, and Lickitung will be immune to it, and all that good stuff. But I'm going to stay away from it, because Lickitung sucks. In my opinion. Alright, so. Looks like everybody's purified, and the only Shadow Pokemon we have left here is going to be that Shadow Lugia. Uh, so, that's the only thing we have left to do. Everyone else is looking good. And uh, what we need to have happening here is that we need to have all nine sets of the um, purifying chamber with full tempo, which we do have. And as I'm saving here, you can see that we have uh, 82 purified Pokemon out of 83 possible shadow Pokemon. So we'll go back into the purifying chamber. Since we have the tempo at maximum at all nine sets, we can now purify this shadow Lugia. So let's take a look at it one more time. Looks awesome. Its stats, pretty awesome except for its uh, special attack, which at level 50 is under 100, which is just downright sad for a legendary Pokemon, or really any Pokemon at this point, honestly, uh, because I have a couple of Pokemon whose specific stats are like approaching 200 or over 200, so I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter what set you put it in, just make sure that um, the type advantage is there, and it'll say something is happening with Shadow Lugia, and now look, its shadow bar is down to nothing, and it's ready to be purified that fast. You don't have to do anything else. I feel like they should have made this a little bit uh, harder to accomplish, but uh, regardless, time to purify that Shadow Lugia. And as we do, it's going to lose its shadow form, which is unfortunate. I wish you could keep that form, um, or even like trade the shadow form to another game, but uh, since XD was created afterwards, it just didn't work out that way. Alright, so, Lugia is going to regain the move Psycho Boost, which is the psychic version of Overheat. And Feather Dance, which uh, decreases the opponent's attack sharply. We have Earthquake, which is good against those pesky rock and electric types that would be super effective. And then Hydro Pump. Notice that uh, Lugia does not regain Aeroblast, even though it knew like the shadow equivalent of Aeroblast um, when it was a shadow Pokemon. That's because it doesn't learn Aeroblast until level 70-something. I want to say 77. Uh, but I know it keeps changing throughout all the games, so it's hard to keep track of what level uh, he learns everything throughout all the generations. But I want to say it was 77 in this uh, generation. So uh, fear not, you haven't lost Aeroblast. And if I'm incorrect about that, you can always go to the uh, Move Relearner on Mount Battle to reteach it to him for whatever reason. And Lugia is looking awesome as always. Uh, as far as stats go, Lugia is just awesome for his uh, defensive abilities. Uh, specifically his special defense. He can just tank and tank and tank and it's just impossible. And when I found that out the hard way and uh, demonstrated that the hard way uh, with the battle CDs when I was uh, using Latios and Latias to try to take that thing down, it just would not go down. Super effective move after super effective move and it was like it was almost doing nothing. Um, the downside to that is that Lugia has very average speed and well below average special attack and attacking stats. 
Uh, and in fact, Lugia's uh, physical attacking stats are actually better, which doesn't make a lot of sense, considering he uses most mostly uh, special attacking moves. But anyway, that's enough about the Shadow Lugia. Let's go over my team before we take on Area 10 of Mount Battle. Alright, we have Zaprong here, our Electabuzz, at level 65 with the static ability. And as you can see, its highest, at, uh, at, yeah, its highest stat is going to be its special attack. And everything else is pretty well-rounded. Um, and I pretty much kept the same moves throughout most of the game. Ice Punch, Psychic, Thunder Wave, and Thunder. I did get rid of uh, Thunder Punch for Thunderbolt, and then Thunderbolt for Thunder. Vaporeon has an amazing HP stat at 268. Uh, fairly average uh, other stats except for special attack and I did keep bite and that's just because sometimes I get really lucky with the flinching conditions other than that it has rain dance ice beam and hydro pump we have Flygon here all my Pokemon are at little 65 by the way Flygon has the leftovers and its high set, uh, stat is actually speed at 166 followed by attack at 160 and then everything else is pretty well rounded uh, its HP is about normal as well, and it comes with Flamethrower, Solar Beam, Dragon Breath, and Earthquake. The reason it doesn't know Dragon Claw is because Dragon Claw is a prize TM from the Ore Coliseum that I haven't completed all the sets of, so if uh, you want to grab Dragon Claw, that's where you can get it. You can get Sludge Bomb there as well. Uh, Agron, his defense is a whopping 262, well below average special attack, special defense, and speed. And then a very high attack stat at 176 as well, so he can do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the rock head ability, so no double edge for you. But he comes with rock tomb, brick break, iron tail, and protect. Unfortunately, two out of his three attacking moves have low accuracy, so that's the biggest downside for him. Uh, Alright, nine tails. It's holding the charcoal to increase its firepower because, well, uh, it only knows fire moves. Special attack and speed as well as special defense, are all pretty much identical, and then it has fairly low defense and even lower attack power, but I'm not going to be using physical attacks. It only knows fire moves. So we have Heat Wave to attack both opponents if necessary. Flamethrower, which is going to be the main attack you use. Sunny Day to change the weather, and uh, Will-O-Wisp in order to burn opponents, and I'm going to, I plan on using Will-O-Wisp a lot more than you would think, because lowering their attack stat and dealing damage every turn at the same time is a much better strategy than you would think it would be. Alright, we have Crobat here with a 197 speed stat and a 151 attack stat, and then everything else is just about the same, give or take. Does have a slight edge on special defense as opposed to physical defense, uh, but Crobat is mainly known for its ability to move first. Shadow Ball, Poison Fang, Aerial Ace, and Giga Drain are its moves. Sludge Bomb uh, would have to be uh, taught via TM, which can be received uh, through the Ore Coliseum or through a trade. Uh, but I'm doing this without completing all of the Ore Coliseum and uh, no trading as well. So we're going to stick with Poison Fang. Alright, well that's going to be my team for uh, the finale, and that's going to be in the next episode. It's going to be a long one. I'm thinking almost an hour, if not more than that. We'll see how long it takes. Uh, but we're in for some really, really good battles, so stay tuned for episode number 116. Game on!